Okay, I just started the recording again. So we'll go through Real Estate Perspectives Part 2 today. Uh, so uh, your homework from last week was to go over your entrepreneur's mantra. It is unacceptable for my business to profit less than blank, whatever that number is. Uh, so today I'm going to, you can keep yours private if you want or between us, you know, when we meet one-on-one, -on -one. but the number I'm going to use today is going to be a hundred thousand dollars. So, um, that's the elusive number that people think they can't hit in real estate. Like, oh my gosh, it'd be great if I made six figures. When you break down the numbers into activities and transactions, you'll find out that it doesn't really take that many sales to get to a hundred thousand dollars. So let me share my screen. Here we go. All right, so it is unacceptable for my business to profit less than $100,000. And remember, we're talking about um, what you're taking home. You know, we use the gross commission income a lot for awards and things like that with Remax or um, you know, awards for whatever, you know, we talk about, hey, I sold, you know, gross commission income of $250,000. Well, that's great. I mean, but that's not what you're taking home. So it's awesome to put in marketing. It's awesome when you get your awards at, you know, the Remax events, but really what we need to talk about to get real is, is what you're going to have to take home every, every year. So I'm going to use $100,000 because again, that's, that's the number a lot of people think is, is unreachable. And we're going to talk about that today that um, you know, probably not your first year in real estate, maybe not your second year in real estate by year three. If you do the things we teach and you're effective with your time and use your time wisely, you can still, you can make a hundred thousand dollars in real estate working 40 hours a week. It's totally doable. There's people here doing it. There's people all over our market doing it. Um, and a lot of people think you can't do that because our average sales price is so low and you totally can. And we're going to tell you how today. Okay, so now that you've established a meaning, meaningful economic benchmark, you can be, uh, begin designing an appropriate funding vehicle. This entails assembling your business goals, plans, and strategies, your GPS that we talked about. Um, remember, you get out of life what you put into it, and the same thing in your business. You get out what you put into it. If you're going to put in part, you're going to get out results. So remember from last week, irrefutable fact number one is, is real estate is a get rich business. So today we're talking about irrefutable fact number two, real estate sales is basic. It's not really complicated. If you do a couple simple things in our business, you're gonna be very successful. And what we found over the years is that on the very, very basic level, if you call people back, if you're nice to people and you're easy to work with and you have some integrity and do what you say you're gonna do, um, that's really all the basic things you need to do in real estate to make money. We hear that time and time again from our clients. Why did you choose Remax or why did you choose me? Because you called me back. It's really just as simple as that sometimes. So real estate sales is basic. Don't overcomplicate it. Um, you know, work your spirit of influence, be available, uh, call people back, over communicate, and you're gonna get, make a lot of money in this business. <clears throat> So today we're gonna to talk about, we're gonna break everything down into the numbers game, right? So there's the 28 core beliefs, there's three different uh, operational, three different models for your real estate business, eight functions, 14 responsibilities, the six ancillary arms, which are your lenders, your title companies, your home inspectors, uh, the 94 vital activities that we're gonna break down between listings and buyers, um, then $13 productive activities, 14 key performance standards, because you want to keep track of, hey, if, what am I, is what I'm doing working? Am I meeting my performance standards? Because that all makes, that's where the money comes from. And really, how, how can you get all this done in 24 hours a day? So remember, every thought has a physical consequence, for better or for worse. So beliefs determine your perspective and justify your behavior. In order to stay focused on the right activities, you must establish and, and internalize positive, productive beliefs. And this can work in the opposite way, right? If you think about negative things all the time or a lot of negative self-talk, that's what's going to show up in your business. So keeping a positive attitude and following the program and the systems we have um, is going to make a huge difference in your business and try to keep that negative self-talk out of your head. Uh, 
so dissecting a belief. So what is a belief? A belief is a habit of the mind, something you actually truly believe and internalize. Um, it's acquired by frequent repetition. Things you're going to do often. And that leads to the truth, so the state of being the case, the reality. So if I believe it, if I practice it, it's going to become my reality. Because what you frequently think about becomes internalized and accepted as the truth. Uh, truths, once internalized, guide your thinking and thus your behavior. Then number three, your beliefs ultimately define your reality and thus your world. So what you believe and what you stay focused on in a positive way shows up in your business and that's how you make money in real estate. Having well-defined beliefs makes it easy to say yes or no to things um, in your business. So if you're, you know, you're the core uh, buyer beliefs, right? Um, motivated, qualified, and loyal people buy homes. So if you truly believe that, it's easy to say no to someone who doesn't have a pre-approval letter, right? So really having well-defined beliefs makes it easy to say yes or no to certain situations. So that's the perfect example. Motivated, qualified, and loyal people buy homes. If they're not all three, I'm gonna say no, and I'm not gonna show you that house. And we talk about in your booklet, so we have a core entrepreneurial beliefs for all the programs, real estate beliefs, listing beliefs, and buyer beliefs. Um, that you really need to uh, internalize and read over them, you know, take it in, you know, what does it mean to you when you read these things? Um, so your core entrepreneurial beliefs, I'm, I'm not going to read through all of these, but you know, it's, it's win, win or no deal. We talked about that all the time. I reap what I sow. Again, you get out what you put into it. And my only limit is time. So how do you, how, how can you make $100,000 working 40 hours a week? Uh, the real estate beliefs, you know, real estate is a get rich business. Um, I will not convert 100% of the leads I do not generate. So again, prospecting, if you're not out there prospecting, if you're not doing open houses, if you're not asking for referrals from your student influence, there's no one to convert. So I will not convert 100% of the leads that I do not generate. And again, it's unacceptable to leave my clients money on the table, whether you're working with a seller or you're working with a buyer, it's your job to get them the best deal. And it's unacceptable for you to leave their money on the table. Uh, core listing beliefs. You know, two reasons, price and exposure. You know, that's, that's a really good, we talked to our clients about, like, hey, you could price it right. If I suck at marketing, it's not gonna sell. Or if we overprice it, and I do my the best job anybody in, all, in the world has ever done on marketing, it's still not gonna sell. These two things need to work together to get a home sold. Uh, pricing is neighborhood specific. You know, that's a good one. You don't wanna go out too far looking for comps when you're listing a house, you wanna stay in the neighborhood. And what what's put in motion stays in motion. That's the, you know, when someone says, hey, if I, uh, I I want to list high because I can always come down. Well, yeah, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you can always come down, but you know what, what gets put in motion stays in motion. Once you start going down, it's going to keep going down. Price reduction, price reduction, price reduction, and you're going to sell for a lot less than you could have if we would have priced it right the first time. And of course, pricing homes is not an exact science. You know, a lot of people are going to interview two or three realtors and the prices are going to all be the same. So you need to be able to justify your price um, because the pricing game is all about justification. So it's not an exact science, you know, three realtors aren't gonna go in and give the seller the same price every time. And of course the buyer beliefs, motivated, qualified and loyal people buy homes. If you truly, truly believe that, it's gonna be easy to say no to certain situations when someone isn't motivated, isn't qualified or isn't loyal. You know what, I understand you're pre-approved, you're ready to buy a house, but you know, you didn't wanna sign that buyer agency contract and I'm, I'm sorry, I just don't work with people who are committed to working with me. The easy way to say no, right? But you have to truly believe these things and believe that there's enough. We remember the, the other one, we, are, we live in a world of abundance. There's plenty of people out there to work with that do want to work with you. And of course, uh, your A buyers deserve your immediate attention. You should be talking to your A buyers every single day, whether sending them listings, sending them texts. Hey, what did you think about the house we looked at last night? Whatever it is, A buyers need daily communication from you. And they may not, they may not, they may not be an A buyer any longer. You might show them some houses and then you don't have any any for more appointments coming up so you know maybe we need to move them to be buyer or maybe their timeline has changed or whatever so um, just those are the beliefs for buyer beliefs and we were going to talk about the three models today so there's three different uh, models in your business there's the economic model uh, what your business must do um, we talked about you know your entrepreneur's mantra um, because you're uh, finance, your life aspirations determine your financial requirement. And remember, you're going to do a budget. You're going to see how much money you want to save, how many vacations you want to go on. That's your life aspirations. That determines your, your entrepreneur's mantra, which uh, determines your economic model. Okay, I want to make $100,000, me taking home $100,000. Um, so how does that work? And what do I need to do in my operational model, which is how your business will do it, 
and how does that affect my organizational model? Who in your business will do it? So you're a solo agent, then your organizational model is you. There's you and uh, we have a closing department here for you. So that's your organizational model. Uh, you might get to a point in your career, like, you know what, I really need an assistant. So there's you, there's an assistant, and then there's our closing department here. Uh, part of your organizational model is also our ancillary services. So the lenders you work with, the title companies, the home inspectors, all these people that do that part of the business that you don't need to worry about. You know, if you have a good relationship with a home inspector and a, and a good home inspector, you know, it's their job to explain that report to the buyer. It's not your job to de decipher that whole entire thing and be like, hey, here's what I think. Um, you should be doing that. You should be looking over the report, especially if they're freaking out about something. You should look at the report and say, hey, you know what? You know, the home inspector said that was kind of a minimal item. That's normal wear and tear. That's nothing to be freaked out about. But if you have a good home inspector, then that's their job to do that. That's, again, that's saving you time to do what you do best, which is go out and list and sell homes. Same thing with your lenders. Um, work with a lender you know and trust to get the job done. That's less time you have to put into making sure they do their job. And of course, your operational model, how your business will do it. What's my operational model? What are my three pillars of income? Are they for sale by owners, my server influence, and social media? You know, we talk about when you do your business planning, what are your three pillars um, that you're going to focus on? Because you can't do everything. We know that. You can't do FISBOs, expired, sphere of influence, door knocking, social media, Instagram, Facebook, email blasts, Google. Like there's, there's dozens of things you can do to, to generate leads and you can't do all 10 or 15 or 20 of them, but pick your top three for your operational model. Okay, so what does your academic model include? It includes your entrepreneur's mantra, uh, your profit requirement, uh, commission rate schedule, you know, what is your average commission rate, transaction benchmark, which, we're, which is gonna be determined by your profit requirement. And then your financial statements, you're gonna put a budget together um, and all that kind of stuff. So you know, what am I spending on advertising? Well, what are my expenses that need to come out of that? So again, your academic fundamentals lead with revenue uh, and keep your expenses low. Uh, your real estate beliefs. Um, these are the, some of the classes, the other um, momentum classes that we'll be going through. Uh, lead gen, the lead conversion, prospecting, sellers and buyers, supporting clients and improving systems. Operational fundamentals, you know, know, your, know your value proposition. Why do people wanna work with me? and study your game, you know, master your business model. Like, you know what, I'm gonna, uh, working for sale by owners is one of my pillars of income. I'm gonna get really, really, really good at that. I'm gonna do the FISBO bootcamp. I'm gonna follow it to the T and I'm gonna modify it as I need to for what works for our market, but master whatever one of your, whatever your pillars of income are for your uh, operational model. And your listing beliefs. Uh, your real estate sales responsibilities, complete job descriptions for your organizational model. Like who in my business does what? Okay, if I'm a solo agent, I'm showing homes and I'm listing homes, but I, maybe I have an assistant, their job to do all the paperwork for me. And we have a closing department. You know, our closing department's job is to make sure the deal gets closed once that goes under contract. So the basic sales uh, economics for any sales business revolves around commission and volume. You know, how much volume do you need to do? What is your commission split? That determines how much business you need to do to hit your entrepreneur's mantra. So real estate is a low margin, high volume business. So why is it a low margin business? This is one of the few industries uh, in sales that we sell a product that we don't have to buy. Like we're not stocking shelves with the houses, right? We're not putting money up front um, to sell a home. Like we're selling someone's home and they're paying us for a service. So we have zero inventory that we have to pay for. So that's why it's a low margin business in high volume. You know, if you do your uh, organizational model, right, you can do a lot of business. If you have, um, you know, people in your business that are going to help you, maybe you have a buyer's agent, maybe you have an assistant, a closing department. Um, maybe you have an advertising person that does your advertising and social media for you. So you don't have to, so you can do a high volume business. If you have your organizational model set up uh, efficiently. <clears throat> so again, we're going to keep our expenses low, low margin, high volume, do more volume by filling out your organizational model equals high revenue. High revenue minus the low expenses equals high profit, the, the more money you're going to make. So calculating your transaction benchmark, we're going to talk about your desired profit, uh, your operating expenses um, equals the revenue required. 
Uh, so your revenue required divided by your average commission rate will be the volume required and the volume required divided by your average sales price will be your transaction benchmark. So let me jump over to my iPad real quick and if I can get this to work, it's gonna be amazing. Okay. All right, yay. Everybody see that? I can't hear you, so I can't see you either. So hopefully you can see it. <laughs> so, uh, so we're gonna be conservative and we're gonna talk about a $150,000 average sales price. Um, you know, right now, some of the recent stats are 150 to 170, or sorry, 160 to 170. But again, let's, let's, we always try to be really conservative when we're talking about these numbers, because if you want to go in here and say, hey, my, I'm going to, my average sales price this year is going to be 200,000. And if it isn't, then your whole system's off, right? Hey, I only, I only need to sell 20 houses if my average sales price is 200,000. Well, that's great. But how do you know your average sales price is going to be 200,000? So let's err on the side of caution. And we're going to, we're going to do 150,000. So uh, 150,000, let's say you get one side of the transaction, so you get 3% of that. D, and that equals $4,500, your gross commission income, right? And we take off the 5% broker service fee, which is 225. So that's 42.75. And times your 70% as a solo agent, uh, if you're getting 70-30, uh, that's 29.92.50. So let's round that up by $7.50 and say, you make $3,000 every time you sell a house, right? Okay, so let's say your entrepreneur's mantra is I want to take home, or I want to profit $100,000 and you have $15,000 in expenses. You're not doing, a, you're not spending money on Zillow, you're not spending money on realtor.com, you're just doing a lot of social media, you're reaching out to for, um, for sale by owners, which is very, doesn't cost you any money. Uh, you're reaching out to your sphere of influence for buyer leads, which doesn't really cost you any money, just costs you your time. So you need to make $115,000. And you divide that by the 29 by 3,000. That is 38 transactions. So take 38 divided by 12. A little over three a month. So that's it, $100,000, six figure income by selling three homes a month. And that's being very conservative on the average sales price, right? So if your average sales price is higher, if you're um, focusing on, you know, Tecumseh area, the Irish Shells area, all that kind of stuff, you can um, get there quicker, get there with fewer transactions. But being very conservative, you sell a house, $150,000, you make $3,000, you wanna take home $100,000 after your expenses, uh, that has 38 transactions. So just as easy as that, right? So, all right, and obviously for the team members, I did these numbers both ways um, for team members and for solo agents one time and it came out the same way. So I know that team agents are on a different commission split but you have zero expenses. So it kind of works out the same way. Um, you can still make the same amount of money um, and actually fewer transactions than a solo agent because you're not paying for your advertising or any of that kind of stuff. So we could talk about those numbers at, a, at the team meeting as well. Uh, let me go back to my slideshow. All right, so now we know how as a solo agent, if you're on 7030, you're paying your own expenses, doing your own advertising, you're building out your budget. 
about 38 transactions a year, about three, a little over three a month to sell, uh, make $100,000 in real estate in Runaway County with an average sales price of $150,000. So let's go back to Okay, so this is if you really, really want to get more specific on like the number of uh, average price listings you get, the number of uh, high sales price listings you get. And that can work here in Longway County because you might say, you know, usually throughout the year, I'm going to get $150,000 listings, but during the summer, I might get some lake properties at 250, 300, 350, 400. You're not going to sell four of those a year. So again, that could be part of your um, marketing plan is like, you know, what? I need to get at least four listings a year that are over 300,000 to meet my goal. That means you're going to start marketing to lake property, right? Uh, how many uh, double sides will I get? Well, how many listings and buyer sides will I get on the same one? That doesn't happen very often, but if I look at my numbers from last year, I did three of those. So I'm going to, I'm going to guess I'm going to do three or four this year. Um, we don't really do a lot of commercial vacant land. You can figure in referrals. So you can really break this down uh, to each category. I think that's a little, I think that's overcomplicating it in my opinion. Let's stick with what I just showed you. You know, the 150, 3% commission, this and this and this. Here's what, here's what you need to make. So focus on that. I'm going to focus on selling three houses a month. That's all you need to focus on instead of, hey, I'm going to focus on selling uh, one house in Adrian every month, two houses in Tecumseh, and one lake property every month. Well, that's way too uh, complicated in my opinion. So let's keep it simple and figure out how you're going to sell three houses a month. Same thing for the buyer side. Hey, am I going to work with first-time buyers? And I'm going to first uh, work with move-up buyers, people moving up to a higher price house. Am I going to work with investors that are flipping houses? So again, you can break this down as small as, small as you want, uh, but ultimately, really it's best just to focus on, hey, I need to sell three houses a month to hit my goal. That's really all you need to do. And we talk about the, oops, I just lost my notes here. Okay, forget it. So we talked, this is the same operational model we saw in the, you know, the open house boot camp, the same operational model we saw in the buyer conversion. We are going to, uh, what's, what's the thing you're gonna do? You're gonna prospect, expireds, physicals, open houses, networking, farming a neighborhood. Um, those are your, those are, those are the things you're gonna do to prospect and generate leads. Now you've generated a lead, you have a new lead, you're gonna convert that lead to a seller or buyer, you're gonna put that lead into our client care systems, and then you're gonna market to that relationship. So I've sold them a house, what am I gonna do? If it's a listing, you're gonna put up a sold sign, you're gonna post it all over social media. If it's a buyer, again, you can just, I was just sold, you can just send out just sold postcards, hey, I sold this house, I represented the buyer and sold, out, sold this house down the street from you. Um, you're gonna to market to that relationship by asking for referrals, and that's gonna, that's going to send up us back up to the generating leads part there. You know, that person is going to give you referrals. You're going to get business from that sold post. You're going to get business from that sold relationship. And that keeps going in the circle like that. And here are the 13 momentum training courses that we're going to go through all of them uh, eventually over the next couple months. So we did open house boot camp already. We did uh, buyer conversion. And right now we're doing real estate sales perspective. So the lead gen classes are the expired FISBO open house marketing referrals, lead conversion, listing conversion, buyer conversion, listing of rejections, and pricing boot camp. And the business business classes for your business, the real estate perspective, the leverage summit, activities management, and then master team builder. And we'll be doing one of these a week till we get through these. And once we get through these, we'll come up with some new content for you guys. So you saw the same uh, no do have graph in the open house bootcamp. Well, what do you need to know? You need to know the dialogues. What do you need to have? You need to have your physical products. You need to have the clipboard, the pricing strategy, the pricing stuff, uh, the MLS sheets, all that kind of stuff. So the no do have is, is something that you, you're going to see in every single one of these classes. What do you need to know? What do you need to do? And what do you need to have to accomplish that goal? So again, lead generation plan, putting together plans will force you to strategically analyze each component of the operational model and help you determine your business strengths and weaknesses. Uh, weaknesses will then be used to dictate training and development needs for the year. Um, so again, you're gonna, what, what, are my, what am I not good at? What are my weaknesses and can I get good at it? Because there's a lot of things you just can't get good at, some things you're not good at. 
you know, I, 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 I'm terrible at accounting. You know, I hate doing that. I hate looking at QuickBooks. I hate trying to figure those numbers out. That's why I don't do it. That's why we have uh, Bianca that handles our, our billing for us. That's why we have a CPA that does our taxes every year. Um, and on a monthly basis, they, you know, audit our, our bank account and our escrow account. Because I don't want to do it. I'm not, I, don't, I, I, I can do it, uh, but I hate doing it. And it's a weakness for me. So why am I going to try to do that? Like, if you focus on your weaknesses, you're going to feel like a failure, right? I suck at doing that. And I still suck at doing that. So and no, there's no amount of training that's going to make me good at it. So I'm going to delegate that to someone else in my business that can do that for me. So again, identify your weaknesses. If it's something that you can get good at and you still like doing it, do it. If it's something that you're not going to get good at and you hate doing it, delegate it to someone else. That's, that's what your organizational model is for. Who in my business is helping me with this thing that I'm not good at? Focus on your strengths. I'm really good at talking to people. I'm really good at pricing homes for listings. I'm really good at uh, working with buyers because my, my average number of houses that I show a buyer is four houses and they buy one. I'm really good at working with buyers and getting them to convert. You know, what are you good at? Focus on that and everything else offload to someone else. Again, lead conversion plan. What's the no do we have of lead conversion? We're gonna go through that in, in that class. Um, usually it's, it's scripts, it's market stats, um, all those kind of things we'll need to have, uh, door knocking lists, whatever that is. Okay, so we talked earlier, we're gonna go over your operational model in more detail. So there's valor productive positions. That's the person listing houses, that's the person working with buyers, that's a team leader. These are the dollar productive uh, positions inside your business. Then there's administrative positions. And if you're a solo agent, then you're doing all of these. So there, there is no, there is no organ, uh, organizational model besides just you. So uh, dollar productive positions, administrative positions, uh, that's the paperwork, administrative assistant, marketing person, a runner, someone that's gonna put up signs for you, deliver paperwork, whatever. Why do most agents tend to move towards just doing stuff? Because it makes them feel busy, right? It's just busy work. It's, um, it's like, hey, I, th I feel like I'm doing something here, so I'm gonna keep on doing it, even though it's not really dollar productive for me. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm putting together listing paperwork, I'm putting together MLS packets for buyers, I'm you know, doing some marketing, it's just stuff, right? That's the administrative stuff that 75% of your business is administrative stuff that you could pay someone else to do if you're a solo agent. Uh, early, early on in my real estate career, I, I learned what the, the thing called opportunity cost is, right? So, and I use this in every aspect of my life. If I can pay someone $12 an hour to do my paperwork for me, because when I evaluate my time, my time is worth $50 an hour. So here's what you do. You go through, after your first full year in real estate, you'll go back through, Okay, how many hours did I work? I, mean, I made approximately, or I worked approximately 40 hours. So I won't pull the iPad out, but I'll just go ahead and do this real quick. So let's say, for example, you made $75,000 last year. Divide that by 52 weeks. Divide that by 40 hours. Your time is worth $36 an hour because you made $75,000 last year. So if doing paperwork is a $12 an hour job, why are you doing a $12 an hour job when your time is worth $36 an hour? So again, 75% of what you do is administrative, 25% is dollar productive. If you can offload all of that administrative onto someone, you could fill your time with dollar productive activities. How much more money can you make? When I first hired an assistant uh, seven years ago, my, my sales doubled in the year that I had an assistant because all the administrative stuff someone else was doing which uh, freed up my time to work with more sellers and buyers. So like literally it doubled my number of transactions that first year I had an assistant. So, and I do that in my personal life too. Uh, if I can pay someone uh, 20, you know, $30 to mow my lawn and it's gonna take me uh, two hours, why am I mowing my lawn? I hate mowing my lawn. I don't wanna do it. I don't like doing yard work. I can pay someone you know, $30 or $15 an hour to do it when I, my time is worth you know, $40 or $50 an hour, then I'm gonna pay someone else to do it. Um, so think about that, and because if you free up your time at home, that's more time you get to spend with your family instead of working out in the yard for two hours when your time is worth more than that. So there's the 14 uh, responsibilities, vital listing responsibilities. There's lead gen, lead conversion, administrative prep, marketing, presenting and negotiating offers, closing prep, and post-closing activities, which is following up for re referrals. Uh, again, there's seven, seven listing uh, responsibilities and there's also seven buyer responsibilities. Same thing, lead gen, lead conversion, administrative, showing homes. Prep and post-closing activities. 
<clears throat> there's three type of activities in your business that you need to focus on. Uh, there's vital. Uh, hopefully you guys can still see me. Just got another that my internet connection is not stable. So uh, I'm having trouble. Someone text me and I'll, I'll take care of it. Three types of activities. There's vital activities, those things that must be done. Uh, relevant activities, those that must be delegated. And irrelevant activities, those things that must be ignored. You know, some things you need to do, some things you can delegate, some things aren't even anything you need to worry about at all. And we talked about the six ancillary arms. You know, what are the, um, who are the people in, in the business that are gonna help you? Uh, so, you know, mortgage people, uh, a follow-up plan, which could be through a service you buy that follows up with your past clients, title companies, um, you know, home inspectors, uh, whatever, whatever um, marketing person you have that helps with your past client conversion or past client referrals. All those things are just people in your business that fit inside your organizational model that don't necessarily work for you, but they help you with your business and help you be more effective. So here's the basic organizational chart for a real estate company. So there's the owner. Sometimes the owner is also a team leader. Uh, a lot of times on a team, there's a listing specialist and a buyer specialist. Sometimes in our case, the listing specialist is me as the team leader and owner. Uh, listing coordinator is stuff that Elizabeth helps me with, the marketing, I do a lot of marketing. Closing coordinator is Bianca. Uh, then you have your ancillary people, the title companies, the mortgage companies, inspection companies. And then we don't really use a runner in our business. We're not really a big, large metropolitan area. We don't need a, we don't need a, a courier to deliver stuff for us, especially since we're paperless. So that's, that's really a thing. Uh, so this is a basic organizational chart to build a real estate company out, out of. So we, the, we break down those seven listing responsibilities into 47 vital listing activities. So of course we're finding the sellers, uh, pre-listing questions, assemble your pricing tools, confirm the appointment. So this is, these are all things that we're gonna go over in more detail in the lead uh, listing conversion class. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here. You can read through it. Uh, again, we can build this. You can make your own marketing based on this stuff. Like, hey, here's all the things that go into me listing your house. I know, understand that you think, you know, 6% commission is a lot, but here's everything that goes into getting your house sold. So just, there, there's people uh, don't see the value unless you show them what you do to get their house sold, right? So just uh, put some marketing together with these 47 activities and it's gonna look a big long list of things that you're gonna do to help them sell their house. And closing prep, post-closing activities we talked about, uh, customer survey, just sold, door knocking. Same thing for buyers. You're gonna generate leads, you're gonna meet with them, you're gonna convert them, get them to sign a buyer agency agreement. Um, you're gonna send them a thank you letter. Hey, thanks for meeting with me. I'm looking forward to helping you find a house. Uh, verify your price range with the lenders. So again, uh, working with home buyers, when you have your home buyer meeting, you know, put a piece of marketing together that has all 47 of these and like, look, here's everything that I'm gonna do for you to help you find a house. And the best part is you don't have to pay me any money. Is that fair? Then shove that little uh, buyer agency agreement right in front of them. Like, hey, here you, here you go. Here's my role. Here's your role. I'm gonna work hard for you. Here's a big list. Here's a list of 47 things that I'm gonna do for you to help you find a house. And the best part is that you don't have to pay me. Showings, writing and negotiating activities, closing prep, post-closing activities. So here are the dollar productive activities, the dollar productive food chain that we talk about when we do our, our, daily, our daily meetings as far as our, the, the daily huddles, you know. Um, you know, are, do you have a closing today? Are you holding any deals together? Are you showing any homes today? What are you doing for prospecting? So if you don't have a closing, you're not negotiating or writing offers, you're not showing homes, the rest of your day should be spent on prospecting um, and converting leads. So we talked about the key performance standards, like what you track in your business grows, right? So if you don't pay attention, you're just kind of haphazardly going through the real estate business, not knowing what, what, you know, what your results are going to be, then you don't know what worked, right? So how many, how many listing appointments do I go on versus how many I get? How many of those listings do I get versus how many actually sell? Okay, if I didn't sell, like, what did I do wrong? So if I can track these things, I know how to get better at it. Same thing with buyers. Um, how many buyer leads did I get? How many buyers? Of, how many of those leads do I, do I convert on a monthly basis? Out of the buyers that I convert, how many of them sign a buyer agency agreement? Out of all the buyers that sign a buyer agency agreement, how many of them write offers and buy homes? So, and you track this because you know if I get 50 buyer leads a month and I only convert five and only one closes, then I'm I, I need to work on. There's something in my business I need to work on to get better at. 
because with 50 buyer leads a month, I should be closing more than one, one deal. Uh, again, keep track of your conversion rates. Um, this, is, this is what's gonna build out your transaction benchmark and your daily activities, because now we know we need to do 38 transactions a year. Uh, but how, again, how many, if those are all gonna be buyer sides, if you're a buyer's agent, you know, how, many, how many buyers do I need to talk to to sell three houses a month? Because I'm gonna call 50 buyers, uh, you know, 10 of them are gonna meet with me, five of them are gonna sign contracts, three of them are gonna buy every month. So now I know what I need to do. I know I need to talk to 50 buyers a month to sell three houses a month. So now that you know that, now that uh, drives your daily activities, you know, I'm gonna call five people a day, I'm gonna prospect, I'm gonna go knock on doors, whatever I'm gonna do. So once we know at the very bottom, you take the three, the three sales a month and take it all the way back up to the top, how many people do I need to be talking to on a daily basis to sell my three houses a month? Again, there's no such thing as time management. There's only 24 hours in a day, 168 hours in the week. Everybody has the same amount of time. So why, why are there some realtors that can sell 50 houses a year? And there's some realtors that sell five houses a year because the person that sells five houses a year, they'll tell you they're a full-time agent. They'll tell you they're working 40 hours a week. So where's the disconnect? What are they doing wrong to where they can only sell five houses a year in 40 hours a week, but there's also someone that's selling 50 houses a year in the same amount of time. Uh, so you're not going to change time. You're not going to get any more of it or any less of it. You know, time passes by. It's what you do with it. Uh, do it with the time and use your time effectively because you can't manage it. You have the same amount of time in the day as everybody else. So you can't manage time, but you can manage and control your activities. So that's what we're going to talk about in this program is what do I need to do on a daily basis to just sell three houses a month? Now that I know I need to sell, how many people do I need to call? How many people should I message on Facebook? How many bomb bomb videos should I send out every day? Uh, this breaks us down to your daily activities because once you know, you might find that, you know what, I only need to spend two hours a day on prospecting to hit my three a month or four a month or whatever it is. Um, so now that you know that, you can become more effective at it. You're going to get some of your life back and you're not going to be working 12 hours a day. So it's crucial that you create a time budget by de defining the number of hours you'll dedicate to your career on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis, and a yearly basis. Remember, um, we talked about in the other programs, you know, we're only we're not working on a 52 week work year. Um, we're gonna plan on vacations, we're gonna take uh, holidays off. So what, what do I need to do to, in that 47 weeks of the year, whatever it is that I'm gonna do, or 48 weeks of the year that I'm gonna do to, on a daily basis to reach my three sales a month. So you must use the time as parameters for your time. All of your time should be blocked out in one of four categories. Uh, lead generation, lead conversion, client care, uh, sign to close. Just client care is um, you're showing people homes, you know, you're know, you working with them uh, till they, from the time they sign the buyer's agency agreement till we get to the closing table. And then once they sign a, a purchase agreement until we get to the closing table. And of course, personal development. You, know, you, need, to, you need to work on yourself. Um, not necessarily every day, but on, on a weekly basis, you should be doing something to gain some more knowledge about your industry, whether that's attending these classes, going on YouTube, watching some other real estate coaches that are good. Um, these are the only four categories that lead to real estate sales revenue, lead gen, lead conversion, client care, and personal development. So put that in. Again, we're doing the dollar productive food chain. Uh, do you have any closings today? No? Okay. Do you have any offers that you're writing or negotiating? No. Do you have any deals that are falling apart that need your help? No. Okay, then you're gonna spend the rest of your day prospecting and converting leads. Uh, these are additional tools uh, tools in your booklet you can use to create your budget. Um, because we, we got your entrepreneur's mantra, remember we need to add your expenses on top of that. So it's great, my, my business is gonna profit $100,000, but what do I need to add on top uh, for that to, to count, figure in my expenses? Um, health insurance, if you're buying health insurance, child care, lawn care, like I said, if you're hiring somebody to mow your lawn so you can work more effectively. Um, what's my mortgage payment? Um, how much, what's my clothes budget? What's my entertainment meals? All that kind of stuff is going to figure in here is, is your expenses. So you can go through this on your own, obviously, of course, count your family income, do a budget for your entire household. How much money do you want to save? How much money do you want to put in retirement? Um, you know, do you want to save money for real estate um, investments down the road? <clears throat> Accounting, yeah, I'm going to hire someone, to, I'm going to hire a bookkeeper, I'm going to hire a CPA. You know, here's my, how much gas I'm spending every year. So start keeping track of that now. I know it's uh, the middle of June, but 
maybe July 1st, start tracking, you know, how much you actually spend on gas. I know we track our mileage so we can write it off at the end of the year, but how, you know, how much did I spend the $300 on gas or did I spend $150 on gas? It's really important to know those things. And obviously that fluctuates with gas prices, but we need some kind of average to put into plug into our budget here. You know, insurance, uh, you don't get charged for that. That's a expense I pay through the office. I know a lot of companies charge the agents. We don't do that here. Health insurance, if you have to pay for health insurance, uh, lock boxes are free. We don't pay for that. So again, go through this budget. You know, what do I pay for? What are my expenses going to be? Um, you know, hey, maybe I did hire an assistant. I'm going to pay. I'm going to pay someone ten dollars an hour to work ten hours a week. So I need to figure that in as an expense. Because remember, your entrepreneur's mantra is how much you're going to profit. All of your business expenses need to go on top, so you can work out your transactional goal. Uh, retirement template. How much do you need if you want to retire with a certain amount of money? Uh, monthly payment calculator for your retirement. And that's it. So now that we know your transactional goal, you know, next time we talk one-on-one, -on -one, let me know what your entrepreneur's mantra is. We'll break that down into a number of transactions, then we can break that down into daily activities. So this, these programs create a roadmap uh, for me to help you be successful in the real estate business. So think about that. Let's schedule our one-on-ones for the the first week of July or maybe last week of June if we run into the holiday. Let me know what your entrepreneur's mantra is. Uh, let me know what your expenses are if you're on the team. Um, you know, you have your gas, that's pre pretty much about it. If you're a solo agent, um, you know, you're advertising, if you're hiring someone, uh, your signs that you're buying, um, you know, whatever other expenses you have, taking clients out to lunch, taking clients out to dinner, uh, sending out postcards. So it's really important that we not only know your entrepreneur's mantra, but we also know what your expenses are gonna be because that's gonna drive your daily activities to read your transaction benchmark. So again, thanks for joining and good luck out there. And if you have any questions, I'm always available to meet one-on-one -on -one and go over this in more detail.